how's it going? Thought I'd do up a little bit of a clip just to show you guys some of the plants that we've grown around the veggie patch from seeds and plant material we've purchased at um, farmers markets, supermarkets, health food stores and the like. It's very easy to do and quite often it is a lot cheaper than buying from a seed supplier or a nursery. So we'll have a bit of a look at some stuff I've got here and also a bit of a wander around the garden and I'll just run through some of the things that we've grown from produce that we've bought. So here we go. One of the seeds I've actually tried just recently is a mustard seed. This is a yellow mustard seed. Now normally to buy a small packet of a uh, couple of grams of this cost about $3.50 to $4. I went out and bought a 45 gram pack for $2. Uh, just in our little jars here we use to save seeds. And yeah, that's a massive saving and look at the amount of seeds you're going to get for that. There's quite a good germination rate. We've got some with leaves, their first seed leaves, and I noticed just earlier, I don't know if you can make it out, but there's a lot that have just started to sprout down the bottom there. So I'm actually growing these as a green manure crop in one of the beds, and I thought that, you know, would also grow them to see what the greens taste like as well. So there's a bit of a tip. You can save yourself a few dollars and still grow organically produce seeds if that's a big concern to you. So We've grown coriander from store-bought seed before and we also want to try caraway and cumin as well. There are a couple of other seeds that we like to use in cooking a bit. You can also save seed from melons. We've got these pie de sapo or toad skin or also Christmas melon. We just bought it at a supermarket and saved the seeds from a couple of the melons and these guys have actually taken off rather well in a couple of spots in the yard. We've got one out the front growing in the soil and one just behind me here. Um, they're doing rather well in the patch. Hopefully we might end up with a melon before the year's out. We're coming to the end of summer here. I'll just take you over and show you the little plant. It's just this one here. There's actually two plants there, I think. It's got a bit of a tendril coming. Try and get him to grow up the trellis here. But yeah, viable seeds. Every seed that we popped in a pot pretty much all germinated. So I'm really chuffed about that. We're sitting under the mango tree, so I thought I'd add this one in as well. If you like mangoes, and if you're game enough to try one, they can be a bit tricky, but mangoes can also be grown from the seeds inside them. Um, this is what the seed looks like. This one has been cleaned ever so nicely by the chickens for us. You can break this open and you can um, sprout the little seed inside this little casing, or you can just have this sitting in water and it may eventually germinate like it would in the wild. So um, they're a great little thing to try, uh, fun to do with the kids just because it's such a big seed. It'd take a few years for you to get some fruit from it, but you know, it could be fun to have a crack at. Just up in the aquaponics, so I've got a couple of things I can show you here. Kang Kong. While it's not looking that fantastic at the moment and it's being destroyed by bugs, this propagates very easy from the cuttings you get from the uh, grocery store. Just pop it in some water and the, the, it'll actually shoot roots very quickly. Ours happened within a couple of days here in the subtropics. Another one is this monster here. It's actually growing under my feet here. This is sweet potato. That too you can grow from a slip from an existing potato you buy at the supermarket, just pop it in some water and they send off runners and those runners can be nipped off the potato once they get about a foot long or 30 centimetres and just planted in the ground. That's all that started this vine here and had a bit of a dig around this morning when we had a visitor and we got about three or four really nice looking tubers forming on this. Where are we? Another one over there. So yeah. Very easy to get loads of food from a simple tuber you can buy from the green grocers. This jalapeno is another one. We bought some jalapenos at the supermarket and it's pretty much well the most spectacular plant we have in the aquaponics at the moment and it's been very prolific. I'm getting loads of fruit off this. Uh, there's some over there. Some very nice looking jalapenos. Didn't think this one was going to make it and it's had a bit of fruit fly strike but yeah still pumping out the fruit. Very impressed with that. We save seeds from this eggplant. We bought it at a, at a, off a farmer's stall at the local Sunday markets at the showgrounds. Save the seeds from that. Uh, sorry, mate. <laughs> no return business from us, but we save the seeds and we've been growing these for a, a while now. This plant here isn't looking the best at the moment, but yeah, very prolific cropper. Very happy with that. And again, just from something we bought as a food source and yeah, we just save the seeds and whacked her in the ground and away we go. Just down here with our green onions, these were actually from a purchase pack of about eight or so um, green onions that we bought at a local market. 
All we did was eat the top sections, uh, most of the white, leaving about an inch or two and a half centimetres of the base section with the little roots that are on there. And we just planted them out and ate the rest. And they just keep coming back over and over and over again. They're a cut and come again crop. You cut it down the base and you eat the top. Leeks are the same. The root section on the leeks, you can plant them. I haven't done that myself, but I have seen other people do it. Um, yeah, so you can try it with leeks as well and see how you go. I figure you're not going to eat the base where the roots are, so you might as well plan it out see what happens and garlic is another member of the alum family as well as shallots that you can grow from purchased produce as well um, we bought our Glen Large a couple of years ago from the same chap who sold us the white eggplant his dad actually grows the garlic and we got a few good crops out of that three of our favorite plants to grow are ginger turmeric and galangal now we've grown all of these guys from rhizomes that we've bought at the grocery stores and they do fantastic if you've got the climate for it um, i know a lot of cooler areas a bit push growing these sort of plants but as far as a spice go very easy to grow this ginger is fantastic we also have a beautiful stand of turmeric it's still in flower actually at the moment um, this turmeric came from an organic growers group and this is a madras one I've just recently found out. I didn't know what type it was for a while. And it's this barrel is just chocolate with rhizome at the moment. All that for buying a $2 piece of turmeric at a grower's market. So fantastic stuff, really. Pineapple's another one that's really easy to grow from store-bought fruit. All you need to do is pull the top out when you're ready to eat the pineapple when it's ripe. You can pull off a couple of the little lower leaf sections as well. And that'll expo expose a small little bit of a trunk you just pop that straight into some soil or into some water, the roots will grow and away you go. Um, all you need to do is wait till they're ready to fruit again, probably a year to two years depending on your climate. And you can repeat the process, pull the top out like we've done here with ours. So very easy to grow pineapple. You can also grow them from little seeds that are from behind these eyes, but I haven't had any luck with that unfortunately. So this is pretty much all the only way we've been growing them. These yellow dragon fruit here are another one that we've saved seeds after buying fruit at a store. Uh, we got them from a tropical fruit specialist. Very easy to dry out, just scrape them from the fruit, let them dry on a plate for a couple of days and then they went into some punnets and we had an excellent germination rate with these guys, gave a couple of punnets away actually. The fruit themselves are slightly different to the normal dragon fruit you see. It's bright yellow in colour. It's also covered in spines, tiny little needle-like spines, just like the cactus has. And the flavour, however, is a little bit different, we think. A little bit more depth to the flavour. The fruit is also a lot sweeter, white-fleshed inside, so we're going to have a crack at these guys. Just need to find somewhere in the yard where the kids aren't going to run into them and do themselves some damage, so... So another obvious one is tomatoes. Uh, tomatoes, if they're an heirloom variety, you might as well have a crack at them. If you've already bought the fruit, you might as well plant out the seeds. I mentioned jalapenos before. All the chilies, you're pretty much all buying a known name chili like a habanero or a, a jalapeno or a um, bird's eye, things like that. Save the seeds and have a crack with them, you might as well. Capsicums or sweet peppers, those guys as well. Um, California Wonder, uh, we've saved our bull's horn capsicum seeds from a purchase one and we've had two or three generations of them now they grow fantastic actually did really really well in the aquaponics um, things like pumpkins and squashes and zucchinis if they're a known known variety that is an heirloom and not an f1 or hybrid um, you can save those seeds and you'll get true to type plants as well the little herb packs that you actually get from the supermarket as well they come wrapped in a little cellophane package those things you can just plant straight out if you're not going to use them straight away or you only want half of them. We've had them take off here. We actually bought basil, I think, didn't we? Mm, basil, basil and parsley. Yeah. Basil and parsley that way. Mark down. Always buy the markdowns uh, from the supermarket. Put them in the aquaponics and they took off. So, yeah, might as well have a go at them as well if you can get them cheap enough. So I hope I haven't bombarded you with too much information. I'll post a link to our seed saving and propagation playlist just up in the corner there. Check them out if you're interested in more details. Or you can ask a question in the comment section below or leave a comment or suggestion down there and I'll get back to you. It might take a little while, a bit flat out with the comments at the moment. So thank you to everyone who leaves comments. It's just taken me a while to get through them all at the moment. So, so I will wrap it up there. Have a great one and take it easy. Cheers, guys.